Hello, I'm Ali Mohammadi. Welcome back. As you already know, the course name is Reservoir Study for Development Plan. In the last video, we talked about reservoir characterization and geological modeling. But reservoir characterization and geological modeling need some data. So what are the source of this data? This is the thing that we're going to talk about in this video. Seismic data is one of the important sources of the data. It can help us to map the structure and stratigraphy of the reservoir. It can also help us to locate the faults. It's so crucial in deep water reservoirs since there are a few well penetration. Seismic data can also help us for reservoir characterization. In this picture, as you can see, there are some seismic inversion. The data we, we can get from the seismic inversion, it can be used for geological modeling and reservoir characterization. Outcrop and basin studies. So the first question may be, uh, what is outcrop? Let me tell you in the simplest way. One way to get data is to drill and get a core or do well logging or do other things. However, as we know that drilling is so expensive, instead, one of the ways to study rock properties is using outcrop. Outcrop has the same material as the reservoir. It is the extension of the reservoir. You can see in the picture, uh, in the picture in the left side. Consider the blue and orange color are the reservoir rock. You can see that these reservoirs are extended to the surface. So simply, instead of getting data from the reservoir, which is, which is around 2 or 3 kilometers under the ground, data can simply be obtained from outcrop. <laughs> Isn't that easy? So now, what is basin? If you look up in the dictionary, you can find out that basin is some kind of container or bowl to hold liquid. In geology, it means the natural depression on the Earth's surface. You can see the curve shape of the reservoir layer in both pictures. These layers are created by depositions of different material during millions of years. Basically, basin studies and how the depositional environment used to be can help us and aid us in defining the structure and geological model of the reservoir. So if we know that how the depositional environment used to look like in the past, now we can, by knowing those information, we can defining uh, the structure and geological model of the reservoir. Well like data are obtained from running tools in well drill in the reservoir. The log data can be corrected, processed, and interpreted. Well, like data with help of other data can help us to determine the structure and stratigraphy of the reservoir. In this picture, you can see some well lag -like data in green, blue, and red color. This data can be analyzed and interpreted, and the results can help us in the reservoir characterization and geological modeling. Core data can be obtained from reservoir rock. In the laboratory, plugs can be taken from these cores and then some analysis can be operated on them, such as the RCA to find rock properties, and such as the porosity and permeability, or scale, or SCAL, to measure capillary pressures and relative permeability data. Some other data also can be obtained from these core data, such as the geomechanical data, X-ray diffraction data, and zebra. In this picture, you can see what the difference between core samples and core plug is. Core plug is a small part of the core sample which can be used and can be fit in any equipment for experiment and testing. Since all the equipments have a standard size. So the important thing is that, you know, when you want to measure porosity and permeability and some rock properties, Usually these devices just accept a very very small size of our sample, a small size of the rock. Core is usually it's kind of big, so we need something smaller. The next source of the data is formation pressures and fluid properties. You should know that, that there is a tool called WFT, which it stands for Wireless Formation Tester. 
This tool can be used to obtain information pressure, pressure depth plot, fluid contact, identification of the reservoir heterogeneities, and etc. It can also aid us in fluid sampling. After the fluid sample is obtained, it can be used for fluid properties calculation. Pressure transient test data or well test data can be obtained from the real stem test, known as the DST. I'm going to talk about well test data more later, but for now, just bear in mind that this data can be interpreted for formation permeability calculation, looking at the faults and presence of the reservoir boundaries. In the following picture, you can see the how pressure transient data look like in a plot. Reservoir performance data include all fluid production and pressure data measured after the reservoir has been placed on production. These include data from well production rate, flowing and static bottom hole pressures, and etc. I should mention that performance data can also be used as a verification tool. Let me give you an example of that. Performance data can be used to verify whether a fault assumed to be a ceiling fault in geological model is acting as a ceiling fault or not based on the actual performance data. Now, we just learned about a uh, source of data for reservoir characterization and geological modeling. So the next question might be, what are the procedure for geological modeling and reservoir characterization? This is going to be a topic of the next video.